good morning. It's really dark here today, um, but that doesn't mean we don't have the light of Christ shining and shining through us. Back in those biblical days, they used to think light shined out from people and not that light shined onto us to make us able to see, but they really believed that it was our own light shining out that caused it us to be visible. We can be seen because of our light shining forth. And so on these days when it feels a little dark, let your light shine and, and brighten up every space that you're in. But on this kind of rainy day that we have today, we thank God for the light that is within us. Because even if there's not light shining upon us, when we can feel that light within us, and, and shine that light within us. It makes this world better. Um, today we're talking a little about transitions. It's Graduate Sunday. It's Mother's Day. It is, um, it is a time for us to, to really truly embrace how hard transitioning is. And I, I say this, I got, I got three kids moving out of our house this week. Um, I woke up almost almost in shock earlier this week i woke up and for some reason i was having one of those days you know what they're like i know you know where you look down and you have really old lady hands <laughs> you know what i'm talking about i looked down and my hands were genuinely what my hands are and i realized i'm not 30 or 40 anymore <laughs> and and sometimes we, we go through these, these transitions so slowly that one day we wake up and we don't even realize that our whole reality is different. It's already changed, but it's okay. It's okay that our life has transitioned because every, every part of it, we don't have to be afraid of. So this, the scripture passage from 1 Peter is, is wonderful for that. Let me read this to you from 1 Peter chapter 3. Remember, this is a pastoral, um, a pastoral letter. We don't know who wrote it. The pastorals are letters that are attributed to Paul, but um, everybody who knows anything about literature knows that um, this one's actually attributed to Peter. Sorry, but anyone who knows about literature knows that these, these letters, we can't always take at face value for who wrote them because the person whose signature is on it, so to speak, writes completely differently than, than the people who this has been credited to. And in some cases, those people weren't even around at the time that the letter was written. Um, so we can, we lean on tradition that tells us who wrote it, but we don't worry so much about who wrote it. We know it's a leader in that early church, and, and that's what really matters. We know that a lot of times they were writing on behalf of other people. A lot of times they were putting names on their, their letters to give credibility to them. So I don't want you to get fixated on who wrote the letter. What I want you to think about is how, how brilliant in the early church, this is probably written a little bit later than some of the letters because it's written during a time when the church is suffering. There, there's persecution. And so it's, it's probably not a letter that was written in 50. It's probably a letter that's written after the 100s when, when um, the persecution, especially probably in Nero's era, started. And so we, we don't know who wrote it, but we know the situation. And that is things were hard and they were trying to accept a new reality that they didn't like. Um, and as we look at, at Mother's Day, at Graduate Sunday, it's those transitions that we, we just weren't ready for. Sometimes we're ready and even then it's hard. Um, and accepting that reality that's around us is really hard. These guys are being persecuted. That's their reality. It is not going well. Let's see what faith 
tells them in this situation as they transition. Now, who will harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you're blessed. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be intimidated. But in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you're maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. That's still our story too, isn't it? Be ready. You know, when you have optimism that it seems like no one else has, when you have that love of God within you that lets the light shine even on dark days, when you are struggling and suffering, and yet you can still find that little glimmer of joy, and other people look at you and they say, what is going on with you? You should be miserable. Be prepared to tell them that it is because of Christ. But do it with gentleness and reverence. Love them into it. Because it's better to suffer for doing good than to suffer for doing evil. What a beautiful, what a beautiful way to look at um, at that transition. To look at at the ways that we can uh, hold our faith and share it, even when things are pretty difficult. Then we have this reading from John chapter fourteen in our lectionary today, and um, it it is so comforting for us. So we we looked at this dealing with things not going our way and transitioning and now we look at god's promise during that time so from john chapter 14 one of our most beloved chapters of john the one that tells us about how how um, christ is preparing a place for us and isn't going to leave us orphaned and we have a place in heaven here is this section. This is verses 15 through 17. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you an advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him or knows him. You know him. Because he abides with you and he will be in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, so today we have a chapter of scripture, John chapter 14, about transitioning to death. And we have a chapter of scripture about transitioning into this time when um, when we're going to be persecuted. So we're not, this isn't death. Things just aren't going our way in, in major ways. Um, and as we look at this time, I, I just have to call the question, you know, anytime we have a transition, it feels like that. Even when it's something good, it feels so heavy. I remember when Alex went to college way back when, you know, Alex has graduated, is going to be teaching at Clark this fall in um, ELL, that's English Language Learning. It used to be called ESL. They've changed that um, in recent years. But 
But I remember way, way back when this whole process started. And it was so positive. Going to college, going out and, and doing the things that, that we've been preparing Alex for, for um, 16 years. And it was, it was amazing to see how good our kids can do and how that, that felt. And yet it was crushing to me to lose my baby and to, um, to feel so out of control after having controlled things for so long. And I think that's the big part of our transitions that we struggle with the most. Um, if I, if I have to think about it, so, you know, not in, in a picture of health here, I'm doing my best, right? We all do, but, but I am very diabetic. I have, I have some other things going on too. And, and, um, the thing that bothers me the most sometimes about my health is how little control I have over it. And, and the same with, with all these other life transitions we're talking about. Um, the scary part of motherhood, as we talk about Mother's Day, was always that I don't have control over everything. I can, I can help in certain places. I can protect in certain places, but I don't have control over it all. And that's scary. I don't control my health. I don't control what happens to my children once, once they're gone from home. And it's scary. This chapter of John starts off with, do not let your hearts be troubled. This section in Peter that we read from says, do not fear and do not be intimidated. Whenever we have transition, the first thing God tells us is you don't have to be afraid. This is, is just natural. This is just the way of the reality. We have to accept it. And then once we accept it, like these scripture passages say, we have to remember to make God a part of it. We have to remember that we have with us an advocate who is already in us, the Holy Spirit, helping us to transition from one thing to the next. This is one of those beautiful passages that sometimes gets swallowed up in this 14th chapter of John. I feel great that we are pulling it out this morning. I apologize for my voice today. Um, I feel great that we're pulling this out this morning, um, this section about how the Holy Spirit is promised to us and how this advocate of the Holy Spirit is living within us. So, so hear this again from John chapter 14. This spirit of truth, right? We have to accept the transition and accept what is true. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees or knows the truth. You know him, because he abides in you, and he will be in you. The truth is in us. We know that change has happened. We know that just like the weather today, the sun has, has been covered up. And like it or not, it's going to rain. But even though it rains, God is with us. Even though things don't turn out the way we like, God is with us. Even when we have to make big changes, whether it's a, a change of not, maybe not being able to, 
to walk anymore. I visited with someone who was struggling with, with that um, recently. And um, that's a big change to, to suddenly not be able to get up on your own without help. Some people are dealing with the change of not having certain people around that, that they used to have around. Whether they're mourning their loss or whether it's kids leaving for college or whether it's um, somebody moving away. Not having that support system, that's a scary change. Maybe our change is simple. Maybe our change is as, as simple as um, having a different car or a new pair of glasses that we can't see out of the same way or what, whatever it is that, that we feel like we are going through change with. It can be horrifying because we have no control. But praise be to God who is with us through every change. Who not only is with us, but is in us. And can help us through. So that then as we suffer the change, then we, we can live out First Peter. We can live out this moment always being ready to accept that spirit of truth, to accept what's going on, and and to offer a defense about how we can how we can be positive even through that, because God is with us. Because it's better for us to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. Sometimes I've met people, and one of their biggest theological struggles is. For some reason, they have felt like, they feel like God's job is to make it so that everything's easy for us. And, and their, their theology over the years has developed into something that has said, if we're struggling, God's gone. Only that's not what this scripture passage says at all. It says life Life is a struggle. We are going to suffer. And if we're going to suffer sometimes, not always, but if we're going to suffer sometimes, it's better to suffer for, for doing good than to suffer for doing evil. So instead of thinking that everything's going to be perfect for us, we have to understand theologically that God's promise is is presence, is being with us, never leaving our side. And in the end, for sure, and hopefully now, bringing us out of that. But if God doesn't bring us out today, and, and it does wait until John 14, until the time of eternity for us, um, until then, if we're going to suffer, do we want to suffer doing good or do we want to suffer doing evil? First Peter says, suffer doing good. John says, you're going to have an advocate with you and you can do this the right way. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to make bad choices. You can get through it. Because the truth is, God is with you. And we know in the end, always in the end, if not any other time throughout the process, for sure, in the end, all will be made better. So it is better for us in our transitions as we struggle to struggle doing good. That's a hard thing. We talk about this um, 
just last week we talked about this out at the nursing home and i love 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 doing worship out at the nursing home and an extended care that's an amazing and important part of our ministry here but let me tell you i love the outlook that some of our some of our most most faithful saints who have gone before us who are um, struggling at the nursing home right now with their transitions that the outlook and the attitude and the love they have in their hearts even now to say if i'm gonna if i'm gonna suffer i would rather suffer for doing good you know choosing to to smile at each other and and to care for each other choosing to to accept that some people uh, respond to their their late stages of life differently than others and to be kind and open and caring about that we have some amazing people who are witnessing to god every day out there at the nursing home up at extended care um, over at the assisted living and it is fabulous to see that and inspiring i hope you are inspired by them as well because they have decided if i'm gonna suffer i'm gonna suffer for doing good because i know that one day this promise from earlier in the chapter of John 14 is true. That all of our transitions eventually end with this. You know the way to the place I'm going because one day I'm going to come and I'm going to bring you there. So don't worry, don't fear. It's hard to change. It's hard to, to accept who we are and to embrace that spirit of truth that, that um, the Gospel of John's talking about today. But when the Spirit lives in us, we can accept that truth and we can be witnesses to the good and do good and suffer for doing good instead of just being miserable and suffering for doing what's evil. Then that light will so shine from us that it won't matter how dark the day is. Today, I pray that's the light that shines from our graduates. I pray that's the light that shines from the moms and grandmas and women of faith out there. I pray that that's the light that shines within each of us as we struggle through to find who we are and how we can stop being afraid of our suffering, stop being miserable, stop fearing what lies ahead, and instead accept that the truth is in us and that the Spirit of God lives in us, even now. Maybe even especially now. May whatever transition you're going through be blessed. And may this day find you shining brightly, even in the midst of whatever your truth is.